As we learn, Jets quarterback Zach Wilson will be relegated to number three emergency quarterback status this Friday against the Miami Dolphins. It's apparent that general manager Joe Douglas, he needs some personal victories. I'm Glenn Norton with Jet Nation Radio and JetNation.com. Be sure to log into JetNation.com where you can register and become a part of what is the most active Jets message board on the web. Jets GM Joe Douglas, who I am a fan of, who I have supported from the day he was hired, um, is having a rough stretch that nobody can deny. Now, part of that rough stretch, of course, includes the trade for Aaron Rodgers that up to now has blown up in the team's face with Rodgers playing only four snaps. That, of course, only made probably even worse than the Rodgers deal itself is not getting a number two quarterback, which we discussed at length a million times over this offseason, this preseason. We were baffled as to why Joe Douglas wasn't, or I didn't at that point, it was too late, but why he hadn't added a viable backup. That has now blown up in his face. For me personally, and I know I'm not on, on, my, on my own with this, a lot of us Jets fans felt like the right thing to do with that first round pick was to grab a wide receiver like Jackson Smith and Jigba, who Rich Zamini actually tweeted the other day the Jets didn't even have a first-round grade on. Um, Smith and Jigba looks like he's on his way to a seven or 800-yard season with the Seattle Seahawks. Slow start, but he's been between 40 and 60 yards a week every single week for the past six weeks, I believe. Um, so at that pace, he'll, he'll you know, 700 yards, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, but Douglas, of course, went with Will McDonald, the edge rusher out of Iowa State. The wide receiver situation, the Jets were obviously not good to go, even with Corey Davis on board. Um, and there were options out there. DeAndre Hopkins was the big one. Jets made no effort there. I've gone over the whole, listen, people just say stuff, and it doesn't have to be true, but if you say it enough, it becomes true in their mind. Um, the number of people I've seen say Hopkins never would have come here because he said he wasn't going to be a Jet. That never happened. Um, I've gone over this before, but I'll mention it again. Um, he was doing an interview where a guy said, I'm going to say some team names and I want to see your response. Give me a, a, a reaction. And when he said the Jets, Hopkins made a silly, funny face like, no, I'm not going there, which is fine. Um, but um, as someone said on the forums and Jet Nation the other day, so, so eloquently, um, if only there's a way teams could persuade players to come play for them. Um, and of that meaning, of course, pay the guy. And, and don't forget, DeAndre Hopkins... After, you know, making the, the face that he made about coming to the Jets, um, a, number, a number of teams were leaked, a number of quarterbacks that he, who he was willing to play for. Guys, like, here's my list of quarterbacks I would play for. And it was like Pat Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, like elite guys. He ended up signing with the Titans and Ryan Tannehill. Like, there may have been places he wanted to go, but he was only going to be able to go to a place that wanted him. And the Jets made no effort. Only a couple teams had him in for a visit, so the Jets absolutely had a shot at DeAndre Hopkins, but Joe Douglas was happy to stand pat with Alan Lazard and Corey Davis, who, again, even when you had those guys, you could have used Hopkins, and now even more than ever. So a lot of swings and misses for Joe Douglas this offseason, and a couple of strikeouts with the bat on his shoulder. So he needs some wins. Um, listen, had this legendary draft class last year that's still unbelievable. Um, really the only guy in the group that you could say is playing really poorly is Max Mitchell. But, I mean, just a great group all around. Gardner, Wilson, Jermaine, jo those three. Listen, this is a problem for a year or two from now, but when those three guys are looking for new deals, like, and don't talk to me about Sauce's 50-year option, like, guys just, those don't matter. If you're good, guys just demand new contracts before that 50-year option hits. So, that's not, it's not like, oh, well, they have Sauce for an extra year more than they have Wilson. Not if he decides he wants his money early. And Gardner, Wilson, Johnson, what do you think those guys would command in free agency a couple of years from now if they keep playing this way? Those three guys combined. That's not even talking about Brees Hall. I mean, $90 million for those three per year? I don't think that's unrealistic, but that's, that's, that's an issue for another day um, or a conversation for another day. This is about this year's class and how Joe Douglas... A, needs some victories, um, and B, can get some. Like, there's, there's the opportunity. He doesn't, need, he doesn't need to repeat a lot. He doesn't need to start playing every single draft pick right away and hope that they're all, you know, showing pro bowl potential. 
You just need some guys to come out and play well and get the fans to go, okay, we have, we have consecutive quality draft classes. Right now, what we have is a 2022 all-timer type of draft class, followed by a 2023, can any of these guys play draft class? And this was something that myself and Chris Schubert said at the time. Chris Schubert, of course, uh, of Jet Nation Radio. And we're going to do, we're going to, we're trying to set up a show on uh, the next couple of days where we're going to do a full review of every single Joe Douglas draft pick um, and the good, the bad, and the ugly. But we said at the time that this class um, had us scratching our heads. It felt like they drafted a bunch of guys that they didn't need right now or the, the, a bunch of guys that weren't going to see the field. And lo and behold, here we are week 11, and most of these guys haven't seen the field. That's not to say they can't, won't, and or won't play well when they get that opportunity. So the, 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 the opportunity is there. Again, Will McDonald, very few snaps. And I tweeted out a few weeks ago, I feel like Will McDonald is ready to break out. Like I've, I, I feel like we've seen enough, even in the very limited snaps. Go to the Giants game, he only played eight snaps. Um, This past week, he only played 12, I want to say. But even in these very limited limited snaps for Will McDonald, you're seeing elite explosion. Like, it's why the Jets drafted him. That quick twitch off the ball explosion that's going to allow him to get into the backfield that coupled with that great spin move, he is going to be a difference maker. Like, history will, will reflect well on Joe Douglas when all is said and done with Will McDonald as long as he stays on the field. Because Joe Douglas' draft picks have a hard time doing that. But Will, even, even as somebody who said Jackson Smith and Jigba was the obvious pick in that spot, over time, no one's going to care that it wasn't Jackson Smith and Jigba. Including myself, really. Because Aaron Rodgers is done. Um, so, really, Jackson Smith and Jigba would have been the more immediate, would have had the more immediate impact, would have been the better player this year or next. Um, but I think Will McDonald, when all is said and done, is going to be an elite player at a more critical position. Um, but again, that's not to say, no. Talk to me next year. If they still don't have any receivers on this team, then I'll be saying it should have been JSN. Um, but, you know, it, if Aaron Rodgers had been healthy, JSN was the right pick. Um, or, or let's just say a receiver, right? I like JSN, but whether it was Zay Flowers or Jordan Addison or, or um, Josh Downs, who I loved. I know he wasn't a first-round guy, but I would have had no issue with him there. I'm a big Josh Downs guy, but receiver was the right way to go if you're a win-now team. The Jets opted for Will McDonald, who we knew was going to be a part-time guy, not a regular contributor. Um, But again, but what we've seen on film from McDonald suggests that he he has the tools to be an elite edge rusher. You're never going to get a complaint from somebody grabbing an elite edge rusher in the first round. Um, But he's going to need some reps. Like, if he can... If he can make some plays, get himself four or five sacks between now and the end of the season, you know, people are going to be like, okay, you know, Joe Douglas found us another one. Um, and by another one, I mean another high-level performer at a key position. Uh, then you have Joe Tipman, who's the only regular and is playing well. Like, he's the one guy right now you can look at and say, okay, in this class, he's seeing the field, he's getting the job done. Um, and again, is only going to get better. And it feels like with this offensive coordinator, we're not seeing Tipman, you know, the, the, the thing that was going to make him go- so good and so special and the reason you wanted him as a Jets fan, I mean, if, for those who did want him, is, is the, the wide, the stretch plays, getting him outside, getting him on the move, taking guys out. The Jets don't do a lot of that. So, you know, Nathaniel Hackett's favorite play, and I think he gets this from his father, they love the, you know, three yards and a cloud of dust. Right up the middle, right through the A-gap, run into the linebacker, run to the DT, and, and, and churn your legs and get two or three yards. That's like their bread and butter. Um, that's not really. Joe Tipman, you know, you're not playing to his strengths, but that's, that's what your coordinator likes, so that's what you're going to do. Uh, but, you know, at some point in his career, I would imagine Joe Tipman will play for a different coordinator and maybe somebody who likes to run the stuff that Joe Tipman excels at. Um, and if we'd see some of that, that could be another win for Joe Douglas. But I think e- even not using Tipman to his, to his strengths, just using him in the way you're using him now, he's going to do enough that people are, people are happy with that pick. Um, Carter Warren next made his debut, his true debut this week when Mekhi Becton went down. Poor PFF grade. I don't remember what it was, but um, it's one of those things. Like I say, PFF is a nice little guide, nice, nice thing to to keep an eye on to, you know, to get an idea how guys are playing. Sometimes they miss, and we've seen that. We saw it a couple times last year um, with Quinn and Williams, and they changed the grade when enough when enough fans got on them. Quinn had a dominant performance and got like a mid grade. 
And then enough people yelled and screamed that PFF was like, okay, we'll go back and watch it again. And then they were like, oh, wait, he was a 92. He wasn't a 60 after all. Um, so Carter Warren, again, didn't get a great grade. Uh, I think he was in the thir- 20s or 30s pass blocking. Listen, I said after the game, he had a rep against Ed Oliver or a rep where Ed Oliver tossed him and threw him onto his backside. Um, but look, Ed Oliver's a great player. It's Carter Warren's first action in an, in an NFL game. Um, it looked like he was blocking down on a guy, uh, a defensive end who was crashing inside. And then he tried to hop outside when Ed Oliver looped around. So he, you know, was a little bit late, wasn't on balance, wasn't set. And Ed Oliver with one arm just tossed him. I mean, it was an embarrassing look. So there were a couple of bad reps, but all in all, Carter Warren, for that being his first game, I I thought played really well. Um, And I think you need to start him after the way he played. And I think, listen, we haven't heard, we haven't had an update on Makai Becton. Um, Rich Samini tweeted out during the game that he'd heard Becton's injury was a high ankle sprain. So I would imagine he'll miss a couple weeks. Plug Carter Warren in there. Let's give him two or three starts. If Carter Warren, again, if he just plays solid, just do a nice job. Show the fans that, okay, we, we may have gotten a guy with the with the 120th pick who can be a player. And I think he can. I think um, I think Carter Warren, he had a lot of experience at Pitt. He played left side. He played the right side. Excellent pass blocker. Run, uh, run blocking needed some work. But he looked good. And Joe Doug, if Joe Douglas had those top, those top three guys, right, get Will McDonald some reps. Let him get to the quarterback. Keep running Joe Tipman out there and start Carter Warren while Makai Becton's out. Now you have three guys, three out of your top three, playing well. Um, again, with McDonald, the only thing holding him back is reps, and that's part of it too. Is it this is a lot of a lot of the Will McDonald stuff is something for for fans who aren't you know paying as much attention to what's happening on the field, um, and whether we like it or not, there's a lot of fans like that, and and owners and GMs they want those people happy because those people buy tickets too. So even though your more casual fan may not realize that Will McDonald looks like he is going to be a monster, they might just look and go, oh, that guy, uh, he's no sacks. No, he's got one strip sack. He, he sucks. But he doesn't. And he's, he's, you know, so if you're paying attention, you're aware that Will McDonald looks like he's going to be elite. Um, so that gives you three guys right there. Like, there's a good chance that those top three guys are going to see significant time between now and the end of the season. Now you get to the next three. Uh, well, actually, let's let's go with the middle. Let's go with Izzy Abanacanda. So he's four, right? I felt robbed this week. I don't know about you, Jets fans, and it's this could be, and I've said before, I have an Izzy Abanacanda bias. Um, loved him at Pitt. Um, said the night before the draft, the night before that round, that he was the name to keep an eye on that I thought the Jets would go after. Um, just so explosive. So explosive. I thought most explosive back in this class. Um, you know, maybe Jameer Gibbs, maybe. Um, but just in terms of from from stop to start, like full speed, he hits full speed so quickly, and when he goes, he goes. So even if you want to say he's top three in this class, um, what, whatever it is, he, again, is another guy who has the physical attributes to be an elite player. And he had one carry the other day, and yes, it went for 11 yards. Yes, it was against a you know, defense that had backed off because the Bills were up by a million. But you could see the explosion. Like the second he touched the ball, boom, he's gone. And he's up the middle for, you know, an 11-yard gain. So let's get Izzy Abanacanda some carries. Let's get, use him out of the backfield as a receiver. Had a couple of catches. Dropped the first target. Um, thrown a little bit behind him. So he's turning, spinning, trying to catch it. Um, wasn't a really good throw. Catchable football, but not a great throw. But caught the next one or two. And if you get him involved in the passing game, and you saw it at Pitt, well, I should say, you didn't see a lot of it at Pitt, which I thought was sort of a, you know, they're bad. But from what I, from what you did see at Pitt when he was targeted, when he did catch the ball, he had some drops. But I think a lot of that is is the fact that he didn't have the best quarterback play, and he didn't see a ton of targets, so he probably wasn't as comfortable catching the ball as he could have been. But he has shown the ability to catch the ball. Um, showed it in college, showed it at his pro day, showed it in the preseason. So we've seen it at multiple levels. And then, as I said, uh, dropped a, a somewhat off-target throw the other day and then caught the next couple. So he's a fourth guy that you can get involved here, and Joe Douglas would would benefit greatly. Like let 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 Izzy Abanacanda catch a screen pass and have Carter Warren take out a linebacker, and Izzy Izzy Abanacanda takes it to the house, and all of a sudden you're looking and going, oh look at these rookies. You get you know 
these guys might be able to play. And that's what Joe Douglas needs right now. Joe Douglas, for this year, not a lot to hang his hat on. Um, not a lot of moves he made went well. Uh, Quentin Jefferson, that move went well, of course. The Aaron Rodgers, what do you want to call him? The six-pack? Just include Hackett and, what is it, five players they brought in, all of whom are terrible? Um, that's that's a question I've been asking for a few weeks now and that we won't get the answer to anytime soon is, you know, were these genuine Joe Douglas moves? I don't think they were. I think Joe, I mean, I think everyone, I think, everyone thinks these moves were made to make Aaron Rodgers happy, which clearly they were. As I've said before, the only move you could say the Jets may have made, regardless of Aaron Rodgers, would have been Alan Lazard. Because there was a need of receiver. He was, believe it or not, graded as the top receiver on the market. So that he may have been a target either way. The other guys, they were all brought in to make Aaron Rodgers happy. Cobb, Turner, all these guys. Um, so Joe Douglas added a bunch of guys for Aaron Rodgers who all blew up. Now, if you're Woody Johnson and you know that, you know, you're looking at Robert Sala and Joe Douglas's job performance at the end of the year. Are you looking at that and going, well, we kind of, we kind of did tell Joe to give Aaron everything he wanted. Um, so we're, we're not going to pin that on him, which I don't think they should. If that's the case, if, if Rogers came in and, and Joe Douglas was told, you know, make sure whatever Aaron wants, Aaron gets. And if all the guys Aaron got were garbage, you can't pin that on Joe Douglas. I'm sorry. Um, again, I said to someone earlier, I really hope this offseason we get a we get a 10-page breakdown from Albert Breer on what happened in this Jets front office. He gets those scoops like nobody else. And I want to know, and this this will be something to talk about in another episode, but um, I mentioned it briefly the other day. I want to know who to be mad at. I do. All these these decisions, like, why why now with Zach? Um, I'm not going to get into all that now. This is about the Joe Douglas draft picks, isn't it? Um, so you got Izzy Banacanda, again, played the other day, looked explosive. Then you have the bottom three, guys who haven't seen the field. Um, Zaire Barnes, Jarek Bernard, Converse, Zach Koontz, of course, linebacker, DB, tight end. Uh, Bernard Converse, I've seen him listed as a safety. I've seen him referenced as a corner. I think the Jets have him as a safety, but um, on their roster, I haven't looked in a little while. I just know that it, what the media has been calling him, what the Jets, Jets list him as are two different things. So it could be, is he a hybrid type? Are they using him in a couple of different spots? Um, we'll have to see. But Barnes, I have a hard time seeing how he gets on the field unless it's just literally a matter of the Jets saying, we're going to sit somebody to give this rookie some reps, you know, over the last few weeks of the season. Um, same for Zach Kuntz. CJ Uzama was just demoted somewhat. Jeremy Ruckert still really not seeing targets, but Ruckert's getting on the field more. Can you work Kuntz in for a few reps? Absolutely. I mean, these bottom three, Barnes, Bernard Converse, and Kuntz, is really, it's hard to see a path to them getting on the field. Bernard Converse may be because the DBs are dinged up. Um, we don't know Michael Carter's status going into next week. Um, but Barnes and Kuntz, the only path to them getting on the field is the Jets forcing them onto the field and saying, we want to see how they look with the live bullets flying and, and, and getting a, a shot to see them. But even with that being the case, even if it's a matter of seeing Will McDonald pick up some sacks, some impact plays, seeing Joe Tipman continue to improve, seeing Carter Warren get a couple of starts with Beckton on the shelf and hopefully playing as well as he did the other day, or, you know, hopefully getting better from there, but at least similar to what we saw from him the other day, and Izzy Abanacan to get him some reps. You know, and then, of course, you have the UDFAs. Um, is Jason Brownlee going to see some targets? Is, is Xavier Gibson going to finally make some plays? You know, there, there is the opportunity because they got, they got the reps last week, didn't see the targets, but the hope now is that with Tim Boyle, you'll have a more decisive quarterback. You know, this is the, one of the things that plagued Zach Wilson, um, and I felt like we saw it get better early in the year. We saw the ball coming out a little quicker, and then he sort of regressed. I think the Giants game was a turning point for him. I think the, the number of hits he took kind of made him skittish again, and we saw some of those bad habits reemerging. Um, so if, if Boyle is sort of a quick decision guy and gets the ball out and gets the ball on target, maybe we see some catches for, for Xavier Gibson, for Jason Brownlee's and some of these UDFAs get an opportunity to make a play. And then, then all of a sudden we're saying, okay, well, this is two consecutive quality draft classes for Joe Douglas. Cause let's not forget, like I've had this conversation before. Um, I think people Everyone's got a different opinion, it seems, of what a quality draft class is. 
Um, I've literally seen people say half your picks have to be starters. Like, that's absurd. That just doesn't happen. That's not a realistic thing. Look at any four, five, six year stretch for any GM. Zero chance you're going to find a guy with half of his picks being starters. That, that, that isn't, that's Madden. That's not real life. Um, real life, get yourself one or two starters and one or two backups, and that's a solid class. And as of right now, as I said, Will McDonald's going to be a beast. So he, he is going to be a starter and a high level one. Joe Tipman's already a starter. He's going to be one. And then it's a matter of, so there's your two starters. Carter Warren, I also think, is going to be a starter. Um, and Izzy Abanacan, at worst, is going to be a backup. Um, I mean, let's face it, most backups, most running backs nowadays are backups. You know, the way guys split carries, nobody's carrying the ball 30 times. Um, and then Barnes, Bernard Converse, Coons, no idea what to expect from those guys, just because we haven't seen them. Um, Bernard Converse, I liked, it. I liked him at corner in college from what I watched, but um, a lot of people feel like he's not going to play there a whole lot. So we'll see what happens there. Barnes, honestly, for me, that would have been Ivan Pace, that pick, instead of Barnes. But um, the Jets went with what they went with. And so, yeah, Douglas, Joe Douglas, if we're being fair, looking at this class, it's um, what's hurting him is they're not seeing the field. And if they were and they were playing well and flashing, people would be a lot happier about Joe Douglas as the general manager. Um, there wouldn't be as much heat because I think there will be some heat from the fa- I don't think Joe Douglas is going anywhere. Don't get me wrong. Um, but you still you don't want to. You don't want to start stacking bad years after a good one. Um, and last year was a really good one. This offseason was a disaster. And now the draft class, you're looking at it going, can these guys play? Because we don't know, because we're not seeing them. Um, but I think they can. I think McDonald, Tittman, Warren, Abanacana can all play. And I think if we see that at some point during the season, people are going to ease up a little and say, all right, we got consecutive quality draft classes from a GM um, and haven't had that in a long time. And, uh, and going back really to, to previous draft classes, I think uh, I think it's fair to say that Jamie and Sherwoods looked like a better player. Like he's come, like that draft class as a whole isn't great, but um, they're they're you know having having a guy start to play better, which is the plan with Sherwood to sort of draft him, played played safety in college, moving the linebacker, see if he can come along in a couple of years, and he's really started to. And I think he could be an eventual replacement for C.J. Mosley. We'll see what happens there. But Joe Douglas, as I said, he needs some wins. He's got the losses this season are big ones. Big, I mean, again, QB two dropped the ball. Wide receiver dropped the ball. Offensive line, as I've said before, you've heard it from me a million times. I'm not killing him for the O line. Um, I don't think many offensive lines are eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve deep, which is what they would have had to have been to to compensate for all these injuries. And now Beckton might be out. For a couple weeks. So you've lost Beckton for a little bit. You missed Tipman for a while. AVT, uh, Connor McGovern, Wes Schweitzer. I mean, everybody. Only guy staying on the field so far is uh, Lakin Tomlinson, who, again, is a big miss in free agency. So Joe Douglas, lots of misses to make up for. But I feel like this draft class, if they get on the field, I think fans will feel a lot better about having Joe D at the helm and picking the talent. Just a matter of uh, let's let's get them some reps. Let's get these offensive guys some reps. Tim Boyle, complete some passes, move the chains, perhaps even a touchdown. We'll see what happens tomorrow night. Myself, Chris Schubert, Dylan Terriman, hopefully having the time. We're trying to build at work our schedules now. We'd like to go over every single Joe Douglas draft pick. Grade them, rate them, pass, fail, whatever you want to call it. Tomorrow night, Jet Nation Live. Check us out.